this is my opinion on it. And this is going to trigger some people. Old school are, is a way that people say they don't want to change. Because you should be new school because it's new. Or you should at least take bits and pieces from everything and use it to be as good as you possibly can. Trigger warning. Hashtag so, trigger warning. You, you shouldn't, and you should never put yourself into a certain category. Because everything that's happened in the past does not dictate the future for what you're going to do, the late you're going to go to, and the way you're going to finish in a tournament. So you, you can be both. You can be whatever you want to be. All right. We are getting everything buttoned up before we go to New York. This is a fellow Elite Series Pro, Jason Williamson. He's got a lot better setup for building rods than I do. So he came over here to build us a few rods before we head up north and go try to catch some smallmouth. He has a pretty good track record fishing for smallmouth. I, on the other hand, have a very poor track record fishing for smallmouth. So I came over here to kind of see the way he sets up his rods and stuff like that. So that's what we're doing, getting ready. And as always, topics come up. Hunter wanted to ask us a question. So why are we sitting here, Hunter? What did, we, what did you not get? The question is, We've been debating already about what is old school, what is new school. we got varying opinions on it. Maybe we're both a little biased, hard to tell. But Hunter set us back down for what? Four. So the question is... Speak up now. The mic is on top of the camera. You have to change my mind. Okay. I don't believe there's an old school. Oh, what, yeah. What about new school? There's not a new school or old school. Okay. Ah. I... Disagree. I can't change your mind because that's what I think. Okay. Jason. That's what I believe also. There's not an old school? <laughs> and there's not a new school? No. That's, no. What, that's what I believe. I believe there's a history and there, there was trends 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago. I mean, in 2010, every single bait, every single turn was one on crankbait. Whether it be a square bill, uh, deep diving crankbait, whatever. Every tournament for like six years went on dang crankbait. Well, in my opinion, history is old school and new school. But as, I, as, I, as I spoke before, back in the day, which is I've, was what you're referring to as history, we didn't have forward-facing sonar. We didn't have glide baits that are 12 inches long. Um, do you think the that list proves yourself on. more as a fisherman? I'm just saying, in, as a general rule of thumb, a guy that's been in the elites for a long period of time looks at that as that stuff is new school stuff. They might not say those two words, new school, but that stuff is more modern. So, how many anglers that are 50 years old in the elites is going to pick up an 8 inch glide bait? How many anglers that are 50, 45, 55 years old are going to mount six grass to their boat and go idling around and, and look at their forward-facing sonar for fish suspended in timber? Like, old school guys, to me, that's what I'm, like, they, that's the old school guy that is probably not going to do that. Okay. So, there might be a better terminology for it, like term for it, but in, in the whole scheme of things, there's also a 50, 55 year old guy on the elites that fishes his way that's older, who's not gonna change. And then you have a new guy, screaming Welcher here, that's gonna run by that old guy 74 times in one day. That's a new guy. New school. That's new school. Now, if we had 35 guys out of 100 10 years ago that fished that way, it wouldn't be new school. It wouldn't be a, a kind, of, kind of a newer, more modern way to fish. There was a few. Van Dam, in my mind, comes up to me as one who fishes fast. I don't think anybody would disagree. Yeah, um, he was the first fast. I've been in the boat with you. I've tried to flip a jig behind you. Don't work real well for me. I did catch a couple, but like at the end of the day, <laughs> You're new. Yeah, I'm new. And and to me, that's new school. Mm -hmm. And then, then we got into the conversation of techniques. Like, a 50, 40, 55 year old guy on the elites, probably, I'm not saying nobody, but for the majority of them that are older, they don't have 
34 rods on the deck. That's that's new. That's a you know. That's a newer you know, deal. I think you know. So, in my mind and in my opinion, that's the difference in the old and the new, or just some of the topics that just pop up in my brain, as you define as kind of like history, you know. So, the the old school are mostly these older guys that are stuck in their ways. They're not trying to change, and it's, in my opinion, from a couple of reasons. Whenever you start fishing, you have a lot of success and even getting to the elite well, whoa, is difficult to do. Whoa, let's stop right there. Old stuck in your ways. Yeah. Hell, dude, a 55-year-old man probably can't do what you do no, in a day if I, you try. I understand, but I'm saying so, he's not so trying to change. He, he, might, he might try to use his forward-facing sonar a little more because that right. don't require a ton of energy. It don't take now, it's energy. probably going to take that guy, I'm that guy, about 19 million more minutes to learn how to use it. That was my second point to that. Is the younger guys, the guys that are younger, they still, in general, are fishing more when they're at home. I would imagine the guys who've been on the elites 10 years, even five years, 15 years, whatever, the guys who are 45, 50, when they go home, they probably put their boat in their garage, they hook it back up when they're headed to another tournament. When I get home, I'm still fishing. That's so good. when I get home, I'm looking, I'm playing with the four faces sonar. So is all these other young guys that are hungry, trying to learn, trying to be better. Another thing with college angling and stuff like that, these younger guys these are traveling. Are guys. Gerald does that too. Gerald fishes a lot. Yeah. He's one of the guys that's well, got. Well, there's always been. He's got all the grass too though, and he's doing it. He's keeping up, but there's certain guys like that that seem to be on the forefront of every curve. It doesn't sure. matter what's happening, social media, you know, he always in front of the new sponsors. He's always, some people are just ahead of the curve because they're always freaking grinding to be better at their business. And, and, I, and I think that those guys are some in that category of not so much older new <clears throat> school. That's just who they are. But the new school guy, he's already doing all that to where the old school guy, like Gerald, he's been out here forever, not saying he's old, but he's always been on the curve. He's in front of it. In front he, of because it. He's and when he goes home, he go, he puts his boat in the garage and fishes all the time. Mm -hmm. Me, I put my boat in the garage and I chase after a two-year-old and all the way to a 19-year-old. Okay, so, he's the same way. He's been yeah, in front of the curve. But there's always been that, even through when I started, there's always been guys who fished a lot, mm -hmm. even when they were home. Right. So I don't think that's really a guy that can be considered old or new school because somebody who fishes all the time. That, well, that's my point is the guys who fish all the time will never be old school sure they can't be i agree with that because they're up to date right there's updates they could be but when you're like me and you got to put your boat in the garage for three weeks two months whatever there's 14 new baits come out two new graphs seven forward facing sonars new line new rods new this and i, I don't have a clue there's not this is not a personal deal okay no. and it's not about him it's or general, me it's just a general discussion i fish faster than anybody I know that's new or old. So I don't think that the way that I fish is new school because you've got all these other guys that came in same time I did, Austin Felix, Takuito, they are the exact opposite. They they fish, you know, three or four spots all day. They fish weightless baits 20 feet deep. They're just on a whole different deal than I am. But we're roughly the same age. I'm a little bit younger than them, but we all came in at the same time. So I think it's a complete spectrum and certain people just fall certain places on the spectrum. To me, the younger guys coming in, what I say new school, is the, the majority of those guys fish faster, cover more water, throw bigger baits, fish when they're at home, mm -hmm. yeah. even when we don't have a tournament. Yep. The old school guys, there's like me, that, that, that's not me. So that's why I think there's a new and old school. Yep. Now, I'm not saying every new guy that comes in that way. So why do you think the newer guys do that? For one, they're young, they're full of energy. A lot of them don't have families. A lot of them don't have a lot of responsibility. Yeah. A lot of them, some of them may not even own a home. Yeah. You know, they may have their mom and dad still, that's their yeah. home. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it comes down to responsibilities in life. You know, what yeah. can you do when you're at home that's feasible for your four kids, six kids, two kids, one kid, whatever? H how much can you put into? Right you know, being the guy that's ahead of the curve. And consistently, and the people every, that do put the time in right. are going to make it faster than people sure. that don't. Sure. So now, with it being more competitive, 
the people that are putting the time in, they're covering more water, they're mm -hmm. up to date on the techniques, they got the best line, mm -hmm. the lightest line, they're maximizing every application. Sure. They're the ones that rise through the ranks the fastest. Right. And other people that don't commit the time to it, they just can't get there. And I think that what you're saying is absolutely true, but I do think that the majority of the people that you're talking about is of the younger generation. Me too, because they're the ones that came up the more, most recent. Sure. So that's what it takes to come up now, is to be that versatile. To have that big of understanding, have that much time on the water, because now, dude, the opens fill up though, like two weeks after yeah. 225 people. Getting through that, getting through well, whatever you want to get through, it takes it takes that it takes that time on the water, that knowledge. Well, look at fishing from a technology standpoint of electronics. <clears throat> electronics now can do more, show you more than ever before. Even even in just general life, 13, 14, 15 years sure. ago, we was way different. Sure, and that means. You got. We wasn't born. Nobody was born and just automatically knew how to use them. You didn't know anything. When you're born. So an older brain like mine, that's half gone, per se, can't can't learn that as fast as somebody who is out there fishes all the time. Don't have any kids. Don't own businesses. They can just go play with it all day. Right. Well, that guy's going to be better than somebody like me, who's not fished in two and a half months and didn't even know it was available to the public. You know what yeah. I mean? So. Well, the younger generation also grew up with technology too, so I feel like it's easier for them to learn graphs and everything. And when the older generation, half of them can't even use their cell phones, so how are they going to learn how to they use graphs? Text. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at guys yeah. like me that are 45. I'm 40, but from 40, 45, 50 years old, their kids can use their phones better than them. Right. You know, Marty Robinson and I have talked about this on the phone before. His kids can go through the Lawrence and my can like, I'm like, I, hell, I didn't know they'd do that. You know? But how long would it take you? A or, lot longer than them. But it'd take you three or four hours, you'd know that thing inside out. If you sit I'm down, not real sure, dude. If, I ain't if real you, smart. If you sit down three hours behind that Lawrence and you didn't stop. I've been trying buttons. to thread that rod for two hours back there and it, 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 I just wasted a bunch of thread. That was about 20%. You effort. told me I could learn that in 10 minutes. It took two hours. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing about 10 minutes. <laughs> Look, the only thing I've been good at today is eating gummy worms. Yep. Candy coated gummy worms. That's why your brain's going. Yeah. I just, I, I think that for the history of competitive sports, competitive everything, everyone has been on the spectrum. Everything competitive, there's never been a, you know, like a, a set bubble where these are the new guys coming in, these are the old guys, They're, it's different. I think I have just, popular opinion. What's your opinion? Okay, you know how everybody brings up different sports players from like the 1980s and stuff, and mm -hmm. they're like, if they were, like, they're the greatest ever. Yeah. I feel like if they were playing now, they would get crushed by, by new sports. You think LeBron would, would crush Michael Jordan? Yeah. I think everybody would. Like, I think every, all the teams now would crush the... That's what they thought about Kevin Van Dam. He just won two weeks ago. We go. Best in the biz to beat him. Beat Wheeler on his home lake. But he won like four AOIs in a row. It don't matter. He said, he's, he, yeah, but he, he, he ain't won a lot in a while. That's what I'm saying, and though. people like, started thinking, well, he went again. Well, he just proved it. Yeah. Well, I think I think what she, like, to her like point... technology is better and, like, training's better, equipment's better. So, obviously, the, uh, the newer teams are just going to be better than the older. Team... That's team. Yeah, team. We're talking about individual. Fishing is an individual sport. So, if you reference Van Dam, you think, man, he's he's getting older. Yeah, he's but he, he's still like he can adapt to <clears> the technology. <throat> I'm saying if you went out, if there was possible to go out and somebody in a boat in the 1980s went out with somebody now in a new boat, they would be crushed by the new boat. Just yeah. like, if you born could fish in, in different times. I'm saying if you could fish in different <laughs> times, you know what I mean. Even 2000. Yeah. To 1995. Well, I mean, the the technology is so much greater. You know, the boats are better. The rods and reels are just. I remember when I first started. This sounds dumb. And I know I, I probably didn't know any better because back then I was young and just full of piss and vinegar and whatever. But I literally did not own a spinning rod. Maybe one. I didn't have a drop shot or a shaking head tied on. Like, it was all about jig, swim bait. Like, you know, but. but Swim bait wise, there wasn't no big 9 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch glide bait or nothing like that. So it shows you how, like, you know. But but to fish in your local area, I'm not saying your local area, but just in general, you don't always have to have everything. Mm -hmm. If you grow up fishing St. Lawrence River, you don't need a bait caster. 
at all. You don't, you, don't, you don't even need one. So, I mean, you grow up in Florida, you don't need a spinning rod at all, you know? So, I mean, it just depends on kind of where you grow up as to, as to what you need. But, to but if be, you don't travel and fish, you got to be good have, at all of it. Yeah. You, I mean, because, and yeah, you're going to have your techniques where we, we go to a certain lake where, you know, something that you got a lot of confidence in that you really get, get that's a player, you got a good chance of top 10 in it. But you also got to still get a dang check whenever it's out of your comfort zone and you're doing funky stuff. You got to be able to pick up a drop shot and get a check or do, funky. Or do whatever. What's funky? Spy bait's pretty funky. It is funky. I'll agree. Hair jig, that thing's pretty funky. There's a lot of stuff that's pretty funky. Long line in a dang crankbait, that's pretty funky. But guess what? Whenever that's the deal, you got to be able to freaking do it. There's some funky stuff going on. They got jerk baits now diving 14, 15 feet. They, you know, wait in the front hook technology, of them. Got it down technology. there 19 foot. Yep. See, I didn't even know that was that. When did the jerk bait come out that we go that day? You got some of them? <laughs> if you, if you see, wait the hooks it's correctly, every day I got fine. some of them. See, I, 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 I got left out of that loop too. Yeah. Anyway, all this is very debatable. Get, get your to kids to go on. There's this new website, okay? There's these websites now that sell fish and tackle. If you get your kids to use that cell the phone, they'll uh they can actually on the phone order some of these new baits that you ain't heard about. I think we don't have a credit card. Do you got one of these? Uh, -uh. no. Nah, you you got to mail a check. Mail a check. Yeah. When they get the check, they'll send you your baits Venmo? back. Venmo. I don't. Uh -uh. You might not take Venmo. But that, they might even have some tabs on those websites that say new stuff. So. New release. New stuff created by new school people. Yep. New Not people. for older generations <clears throat> older than 40. Most Don't click on most the baits you see come out with people's faces on them, old school guys. New baits, old school guys on the, on the package. What's your favorite lure? Frog. Spro, spro frog. Popping frog. Why's it got to be a spro? Call it. I don't got none of them. It's the only one I threw. The only one I've ever thrown. Catches them. Biggins. Can I use the right rod? The debate is. Do make up a handshake and that and then just walk out. Yeah. So <laughs> leave a comment if you think there is an old school or a new school. Because if you consider yourself old school, you're pretty much saying, I've gave up on learning. Disagree one hundred percent. Old people can learn. I didn't it say just no. takes longer. I didn't say you couldn't. I said you gave up on wanting to learn. You gave up on learning. If you're old and you know you're old and you say I'm old school, that doesn't mean you're giving up on learning. Well, why aren't you new school? Because we we trying to get there, we but we can't consider ourselves new school until we get there. School. We old <laughs> school. school. We old Look, school. We difficult got, learners. We Jason slow. Did preschool. <laughs> but we trying. He's got more Japanese baits that are this long and custom painted than anybody I ever seen. That's okay? right. I got a friend in Japan. I ain't got none. I got none. I catch him on. He's got three cinco's, two frogs, and two shaking heads. Yeah, and a big jig and a little jig, and then. A and I gave him the big jig. Square bill. Yeah, that's he it. did have a square bill, not the bill off it. What else you yeah. got? That's that's about all. Spy bait's got the back spinner gone. I, I'm out of bars on it from him too. Yeah. <laughs> so to be old school, you got all the baits. Every single bait. Every bait that you just mentioned, and they're they all didn't brand use new. Have. Never used any of them. Not no hook rash on any of them. Mm -hmm. So all my baits are beat up. His ain't. I've been saving them. No, nah, he been he been sitting at home eating Doritos on the couch while I'm out fishing. I've been here at this <laughs> shop working while he's fishing, <laughs> and while he's been sleeping, and she's sleeping. That's because they're biting at night right now. This is a nighttime fish. You yeah. sleep night and day. I'm sleeping during the day so I can fish at night. We're going night fishing. See if they biting. Leave a comment. Are you old school? Are you new school? Is there such a thing? Am, am I know. old school? If you watch my videos, do you consider me new school or old school? Because I don't believe there's such a thing. I think I just fish the way I want to fish. All right. Peace. The time. Like for real. 15, 20, 25 years ago, everybody wasted a lot of time. Doing what? They, they would drag super long points because like offshore, like, like the the depth finders and stuff weren't there to where you knew where the actual sweet spot was. So, I mean, you, you, when you were- I thought they lined up this pine tree with this roof of this house and that buoy. They did. And that's where- And, then, and then they dragged for 45 minutes because it wasn't that exact. They didn't have that's, a waypoint that was like 10 feet. Well, they, we had a paper graph. Well, but it, you, took, <laughs> it took 27 minutes per foot to grab right. 
the point. Exactly. So you're better right. off just fishing. But how, how many times, even whenever I started coming up, people were throwing a Carolina rig on long points. They wasn't throwing it on a rock pile. They were getting on the long points and they were dragging for like an hour. And they'd get a bite or two. And they would do it all day and they'd catch seven and do that. Now, now it's a lot more about being precise. Pulling up, you hit the sweet spot, you go to another one, you run as much as you can a day. So old school used to waste a ton of time. They'd go, like, except for the people like whenever KVD started, Denny Brown, whoa, 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 all those guys. No, no. Whenever they started, they were still fishing like that, but they, they had to figure it out how to go faster. Listen, us old people, we sit there and we we catch one or two and we don't move around. We wait on that big school to swim up on that hard spot. Yeah. And if we sit there all day, we ain't they, there ain't no way we can miss our timing. Yeah, you get your timing right. That's why the best thing for old people is spot lock. Okay, so, so anchor that, mode. That is, that is a good piece of info right there. If you're fishing somewhere like a tidal fishery or somewhere where fish are moving around a ton, you will hit them at some point. You know, like if you graph a school of fish in practice at 4 o'clock in the evening, you get there the next morning and they're not there, they're going to set up at some point that day. But it just may not be while you're there. So you sit there all day, you're going to collide with them. You're just going to waste a lot of time in the middle. So the new school angler to me downsizes like beyond finesse sometimes to where us old school anglers never really did that like, yeah, yeah, like tiny 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 stuff you know ned rig and smaller and then there's also a version of the new school angler who's your guys out there throwing glide baits that are this long mm -hmm. and i don't that wasn't really a thing back in the day yep you know either so can go either way. <clears throat> Another thing with the new school is old school people were um, technique specific. You used to have flippers, used to have crankers, used to have people that like I remember people that only threw a Carolina rig. So I mean like that is not a thing anymore. You're not gonna come up through the opens being, you know, doing one technique. You're just not gonna make it if you do one technique because they go from South Florida to Oneida in the same year. So so it's very, the point of the matter is, it's obviously better to be more versatile and good at everything. Yeah. But if the schedule sets up a certain way for guys with a lot of experience, sometimes it may pay off to be not so versatile and be more kind of hard headed and set in your ways, especially if you got a, a schedule like I remember our schedules used to be like, you know, Palatka, St. John's River, about the same time, three or four years in a row. And you kind of knew, you know, weather dictated, obviously. I feel like I remember that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's, it's, right it's now. forever in, embedded in our memory bank. But, yeah, so you, you got, I don't know. It's fishing and it all works. But you got to say, okay whether you're new school or old school, you want to be as versatile as possible and be as good as you can at every single thing. Because if you got a schedule like we did this year that has you in Knoxville yep. end of February, 1st of March. Yep. And, and then we got floods, we got tons of current. Yeah, and, and you're, you're, you're going to these great fisheries, but sometimes too early or too late. We hit like three tournaments where we hit them in the spawn funk this year. Right. Where it's like, you're not going to just go flipping and catch them. You're not right. going to go do anything and just catch them. Right. And then the other ones were super flooded, tons of current. Sure. So we, well, we so hit it where... So this was a versatile yeah. angler's year by far. So if yeah. you look at AOI points, you can see people like me that's not very high because I'm not very versatile because if my jig rubber is an eighth of inch, you know, big around, I don't like it. But people like you are super versatile who's, you know, got confidence and doing a lot of different stuff are at the top of the AOI standard. Yeah. And then of course you got unfortunate luck and some people are where they are, but all in all, I'm hoping for a schedule that we can go sit on a deep spot or two or three and really like catch a mega back. I really don't want to run around and not know how I'm gonna get my next bite at the Sabine River or Knoxville, Tennessee River and have no clue, just junk fishing. I don't I don't see that happening again. I hope not. I'm talking about the set on two spots and catch them kind of deal. 
I think those days are gone. Like even even on we haven't had a true offshore tournament. But like Guntersville this year never turned on. Well, it's got grass in it. It's got too much grass. Yeah, they're not good out deep. So I mean, even not like good. Other, not like they used to. Other lakes, like we would have to go to like Chickamauga this time of year right here, right, to catch them offshore, and they're not going. Bass is not going to go this time of year. So do you think that there's a swing? You know, it used to be because nowadays is everybody's got to have four grass, five grass, sometimes six grass. You got to have all this stuff. You got to go out there. You got to idle around. You got to find all this stuff offshore. Mm -hmm. Stuff you can't visually see, obviously. So, I t I've been telling a few people, I think it's starting to swing back around because of the offshore pressure, because of all this technology, and everybody's got everybody's waypoints. It's starting to swing back around to where the bank guy, the guy that can figure out the bank deal and shallow deal for four days, is pretty damn dangerous. No. You agree with that? Or no. Not? You have to be offshore no matter what. Don't fish the bank at all. Blind. Get out there, fish <laughs> offshore. The share, share the waypoints. Everybody get out there. You know where they get. They're coming to you. you there's no future fishing the bank. You have to get offshore. You got to be out there Don't fishing smile. the offshore stuff. Don't even smile. You have to. <laughs> yeah, you have to get offshore. Get off the bank. Do they have enough? Do they need to buy some more graphs? I, I'm, I'm really thinking. Now you we have underwater six, cameras. The, all the competitors are coming out with a little bit different. I Forward think you need to have sonar, side imaging, down imaging, uh, down scan, uh, cameras. Yeah, but but you also sometimes you need amber, sometimes you need blue, sometimes you even need green if you're fishing a lot of rock. So I think you need three forward-facing sonars with different colors, so you for sure don't miss anything. What about interference? No, oh, you can't worry about interference. Maybe you need two boats. Two boats, yeah, for sure. Speaking of forward facing sonar, they have a kid finder. Where's our, where's Bristol? Oh. She's chilling for the first time. No, but for real, it's like, um, it's one of them deals where, Flipping, where I think a bank guy's like. Flipping is coming back hard, harder than ever. But it's, but there's a, there's a different wave to it. There's something new. That's why I ordered all these new hooks and stuff from Gamakatsu. It's because there's a new wave to it, for real. There's. There's going to be some kind of a new flipping technique. It's so new, we're them. building technique-specific rods, and it's called New Flipper. Yep. Because it's not flipping of the old, <clears throat> it's flipping of the new. Yep. But stay tuned, because there's going to be more debate yeah. on old versus new school, forward-facing sonar versus hell. Who needs sonar at all? Leave a comment down below. I don't need if sonar you at all. prefer old school or new school, right, Kyle? Yeah. All I need is a map. Paper map. Lake master mapping. I got Lake if Master. anybody out there has an Compass. old paper graph that Kyle can use to graph some of the long points like we did in 1963, I wasn't born yet, 1984 would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Eagle. It's uh, Eagle is the brand. Eagle got bought out by who? But we got to have a couple rolls of paper with that. Eagle got bought out by Garmin? I don't know. Yeah, but you There's don't... a couple versions of New School, like I said. <clears throat> you get there and then you don't want to change too much. That <laughs> New School of... <clears throat> Being versatile, running around, hitting so 90 nobody million used places. To do that? Some, but like they didn't. Not not as you didn't have to because your lakes used to be more stained. Kevin ran around more than anybody, and he won more than anybody. Yeah, but I lake, mean, he, lakes used to be more stained. Right. Less pressure. There was no kind of offshore mapping, so people didn't really know what was under the water. No, like people didn't like even the boats and stuff had such bad gas mileage, you couldn't even run up the river 30 or 40 miles and make it back in a 20 gallon tank. So literally, there was all this, like if you was blasting off from like the south side of Gunnersville, nobody could go up the river and come back 50 miles. They didn't have a, like they had a 25 gallon gas tank and a 150 horsepower motor that got like two miles to the gallon. They ain't getting up there and back. So there was all this stuff that was, you just couldn't do back then. And you had the stained water, you used to have, I mean you still have a ton of current, but you you could do that type of stuff because of the amount of pressure and the stain to the water now you just can't do it you just can't do it now so if you're going to be anything more than like a one lake wonder where you're good on one lake and you've got your spots yeah you can you don't got to be versatile at all for that but if you're going to travel now i think you have to be i don't know if it's possible to, to come up the ranks through college even a bfl or something without doing a ton of different techniques now well it's definitely better but you can always work your daytimes out, 
wait till the schedule comes out that fits that's perfect. you. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. That's that's perfect. There's but, there's a way then, around but all then of it. You still can't lose any. Like no. you still got to have a year that's just unbelievable. You got to use the right hook. And then you're gonna go. If you make it to the elites, you don't get to pick the schedule. You don't get to wait. So I mean, you can't you can't just go. Well, that's when you just get thrown to the wolves. Yeah, you can't just go flipping whenever your first tournament's on uh, well, Lanier and well, whatever. You know. You can. <laughs> I mean, you Look, can. I I am a flipper. That's if what I want to do. If you got three four facing sonars, a uh, amber, a blue, and a green, like you are recommending for that's everyone, what I have. That's just what I keep on my boat. Then no, you don't flip, but you you probably should just stay at home. Yeah. So, Any recommendations on batteries for all that, or, or at that point, will it be solar, some, some kind of solar? Yeah. It'll be ran by solar. If you've got all 15 inch grass, <laughs> you could put solar panels on the back of all of them. If we have solar, yeah, so, I mean, that'll keep you from a Marshall or Cohen will be on the back deck. You just have, you can lay your solar panels out in the morning to run your, how yeah. many 15 inch grafts? Four, five? At least, at least. At least. Yeah. And then you need probably a 12 for Matt. I'll call Elon Musk. That's probably some solar super new school, like like future new school anglers will have solar panels back there. But <clears throat> here's the deal. If you've got all that stuff, you're committed to it, you're no longer versatile. So now you're old school again. Yep. Because you're hundred percent dialed in to the forward facing sonar. I now just you're have old an school. Idea. Okay, what if you could punch in a waypoint and then have your boat take you to that waypoint? You can now. Like without can on control the motor. Control motor. Oh, it will? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're old school. Never mind, I'm old school. <laughs> Opinion of it. So what? what is old school? Old school's slower. Slower? Uh, you don't burn as much gas. Uh, you have fewer spots, but you know your spots better. Mm -hmm. uh, spending a lot more time in an area. Sorry. Not just like a small spot. Okay. Um, picking a creek and breaking that one creek down instead of trying to cover the whole entire lake. Mm -hmm. Um, not trying to be so versatile as to having 30 rods laid out, more like 10 or 12 <clears throat> that are your strength. Yep. Trusting in that kind of deal. To me, that's more towards an old school angler. Okay. So, you think the newer school guys don't do that type of stuff? I think the newer school guys will, will fish over fish and miss some little details that an old school guy will find. Okay. And I'm not saying that that will win and, and kick that new school guy's butt every time, but I'm saying it could make a difference. Gotcha. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think- I've seen how fast you fish. I've seen how fast a guy I've always looked up to, Mark Davis. He's super slow. But but yeah. And then, and then you got middle of the road, but I don't, I don't. How many guys do you know that's been out here for fifteen plus years that fishes half as fast as you do? I don't know anybody else on the planet except for probably two people that no, fish no, as fast no, as no, me. No, don't forget. Don't forget. I said half. No, I know, but I don't know. Like, I can't name anybody on the elites that fishes probably as fast as I fish. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I don't know. I've never been in the boat with hardly any of them, mm -hmm. but I don't know any of them that fish even almost as fast as me, new or old. But I know that the best to ever fish was probably faster than me. You know? And yeah. then the guy who's winning everything right now, pretty daggone fast himself. But there's a there's a level to that. It's not about speed. It's about the amount of time where they can get everything out of a spot and move on to a new spot. It's not about just because you hit 82 spots in a day doesn't mean you're going to catch more fish than everybody else. You got to be efficient. <clears throat> you got to hit everything you, correctly. Right. You got you to understand how to make fish bite. You got to understand when you're fishing over fish, you need to slow down and change. And then you need to figure out how to maximize your area as fast as possible and move on to the next area. Yeah. Which, I don't know anybody at all that fishes as fast as me, especially in practice. Because in practice, I do not, I want to, the, the time whenever you get a couple bites in the area and go back, I'm not saying you, I'm saying in the old school example, you're going to want to, you know, really dial in the area in practice, I'm always going to do that in the tournament, always. I'm not going to do it in practice at all. If I get, if I find a couple places where I think I can get a bite, I'm gonna go there first thing in the morning of the tournament. I'm gonna get a couple bites We're and expand the on the area. I'm sorry, what's that? That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. I'm gonna expand on the area in the tournament, now, not in practice. See, We're getting some more out of him now. That's just what I do. But I go super fast. You know, I, and I'll admit, I don't think I've, I cover enough water in practice, but I think that 
if I tried to cover it as fast as you and, and a couple other guys as fast as you guys are, I think I would fish over and look over and miss stuff. Mm -hmm. So that would bother me to the point of where I would be like, I'm a medium, it's medium. I think it's pace. all. I think it's all lake dependent. You're somewhere I like Gunnersville, so. which goes back to the schedule. <clears throat> yeah, but but like I mean, if you're on if you're on Gunnersville and you get two bites, there's probably 80 fish there. If you're on Knoxville and you get two bites, you got one more and you probably should have. You talking about shallow or deep? Either way, there just ain't that many. So like, if you flip in a laydown and you get two bites, you think there's 80 around that laydown? On, on Gunnersville, if there if there's a just like if I got a laydown, I think. Well, it's in good. practice, next time we go there, if you get two, just tell me where it's at. I'll just sit right there. Yeah. I, I got I got certain like lay downs or whatever. I'll hit them four or five times in a tournament. Every time I drive by it, I'll make two casts to it. And I mean, sometimes I'll catch three fish at the same one. I'm to, like, they're there. But these, all these topics are subject, subjective to the angler. Yeah, I, that's what, that, that was my opinion of this whole thing is I think it's a spectrum. Even from 20 years ago, you had people who were varying levels of speed and then now you have people who are varying levels of speed because the exact well, way you described old school is Takuita. He don't burn much gas. He goes super slow and he maximizes his area and he really understands and he's his got area. Some sort of Stop. shrimp bait that nobody else has got. Whatever he's got, it it's catches good. him. It catches him. And then, but it's important to note. But in he, this, he is definitely a new school category. I would in put this him in debate, a new category. I don't know. I don't. I think. I, I think it's a spectrum. I think it's. I don't think there's a such thing as an old school and a new school category. I think that it is a spectrum that varies angler to angler, and I lose confidence faster than. I would imagine I lose confidence faster than any other elite angler out there. I, I can get a bite in an area, and fish for three more minutes. I don't care if it's a five pounder and leave and run twenty miles. If I feel like I'm not going to catch another one, or I feel like I got lucky and caught that one, I will leave as soon as I caught even a big one and just leave. I lose confidence extremely fast. So that makes me keep moving. Some people catch them, and, and they have a lot of confidence. I know they're here, or they're coming to me, or whatever. But you said there was 80 there. fish where you caught two. On, on Gunnersville, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I didn't do it this okay. year. I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not doing it. That, but that's if I have confidence. If I catch one out of a grass bed that looks good, it's got some irregularities to it, I'm... I'm gonna have confidence there's a lot more there. The, the the moral of the story is whether it's new school or old school, and I think it's only <clears> correct <throat> to categorize that by an angler themselves, but every way that we've discussed has been successful at some point in time or another mm -hmm. through the years of, of my professional career. Now, I will agree that the faster, more versatile anglers through the times your KVDs, your, you know, your, your guys who move around a lot, we, Jacob Wheeler, like all those guys that are fast and efficient, I think at the end of the day, after looking back through the years, those are your better anglers. There's no doubt. They're going to win more and they're going to be But that does not mean that slower, old school is never going to win again. I think it just depends on the lake and the person. 